In this video, I'm going to talk about the recent, really, really popular Chinese web drama story of Yanxi Palace, Yanxi Gongdue. Hi, you're watching Avenue X, where a junkie on good storytelling shares her thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. First, I have to say this is a Dalian <laughs> video, slap face. Which basically means going back on your own words. I've said in my previous video about untouchable lovers that I don't watch Yu Zhong's dramas. So this is definitely Dalian. Reason being, first, I am aware that how popular this drama is. It is the most popular sort of right now online viewing drama. Also, because a lot of you, a lot of my audience uh, on Instagram, on uh, YouTube's comments are asking, please talk about this drama. For this 70 episodes drama, it has already aired past 40, so it's definitely no longer a first impression in any uh, way. A brief introduction to this drama. This is about Qing mentoring rural China court drama. This is definitely a sort of harem inner court chick fight drama. Uh, the ancestor of this can be traced back to TVB's Jing Zhi Yu Nie or a couple of years ago, really popular Empress in Palace. And actually, this drama is really, really tied to Jing Zhi Yu Nie because its major sort of theme music that plays out through the drama is a reprised, reworked version of the music in Jing Zhi Yu Nie. And also in a uh, story of Yanxi Palace, She Shiman actually plays a very important role and she was one of the lead in the TVB drama. The characters you see in this drama are based on real history. so. So um, they are Qianlong, Empress Qianlong's inner court women. And the lead actress Wu Jian plays Lian Fei, concubine Lin, who is in fact um, sort of one of the most successful women, I'd say, in Qianlong's court because she starts uh, actually from a relatively low place and she eventually ends up being sort of the second in command. Uh, she never was actually crowned empress while she was alive, but because her one of her son becomes the next emperor, so she was posthumously sort of crowned as empress by her son. This drama is produced by Yu Zheng and it's not really written by him, so it's written by a different writer. And it's not really based on an existing book, but when you watch the drama, you'll see a lot of familiar, a lot of familiar character setups and storytelling that refers to many, many previous court fighting dramas. First, in terms of the look, the quality, the visual of a drama, this is one of Yu Zheng's best works. There's a very intentional but very constant look that they're trying to put out through their camera work, through color grading, through their design of costumes and props, it gives that ancient old texture of things that can be real, made with real material like cotton, like linen, like silk, made with real things and doesn't look cheap. It depends on whether you like this style because they did a very yellowish, sort of old look and also desaturated a lot of the very bright colors and then reduced some of the sort of contrast. The fact is Forbidden Palace in Beijing has very bright red walls, but it's almost turned into a very orangish color. So if you like it, it's your thing, then you will enjoy watching it. Otherwise, you'd always be trying to, I want to see some red and green and I don't see any. <laughs> so that's your taste thing. But I have to say they did spend a lot of time and money trying to make things look really, really expensive and good. The best one that Yu Zheng has ever produced. During the promotion and even now, he constantly talks about how much research he has done or his team has done for this drama. Now for that, I would argue, I doubt because there are so many mistakes. So if you watch this drama, watch it as an entertainment drama. Do not watch it as a study or as a representation of mentoring cultures, aesthetics, or people's etiquette, a day-to-day, -day, just, just details about how, how people go about their life. This is not really accurate to history. Qing Dynasty is relatively close to today's dynasty, so there's a lot of material that you can research into. And if you are well learned in that, it's very easy for you to pick out a gazillion mistakes in this drama. I'll just talk about one thing that everybody's laughing at <laughs> right now. It's during episode 10, I think, there's one scene when the Empress's brother, younger brother, going into the palace, greeting her and then leaving. And at the end, he's, he said basically, I'm leaving. He calls himself Xian Di. That is the basic, most basic kind of mistakes you can make in language because Xian Di is a very respectful term to call somebody who is younger than you as your younger brother. Not necessarily blood related, um, but for example, I'm older than you, I'm, and then you are a man, and I'm calling you Xian Di. Xian means sage, 
So it means you're well learned. You are you you you're morally in, impeccable. So I call you Xian Di to be respectful to you. Nobody would ever 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 address themselves as Xian Di in front of their older sister. You only need to know I don't know like middle school Chinese to understand this thing. <laughs> I don't know if it's the scriptwriter's fault, if it's the dubbing actor's fault, or whatever. Like, why this type of mistakes exist? It's just laughable. When they say they've researched a lot into Qing Dynasty, they researched a lot of the very late period of Qing Dynasty in terms of costume, in terms of looks. But Qianlong is actually in the middle of、uh, Qing Dynasty, and at that time, the aesthetics. Was actually very different. So this drama has a lot of looks refers actually to later periods, not to the actual period. So if you really want to go into the nitty gritties of of representation、uh, on on camera and on screen of、uh, actual historical period, don't look at this drama as a reference. It is not. Then let's talk about acting. This is、uh, led by young newcomers, young people, young actress. The lady Wu Jingyan plays Ling Fei. She is the sort of throughline character. She's a character who enters the palace as servant, eventually becomes sort of the the empress de facto, even though she's never crowned as empress. I would say actually her acting is not bad, but it's not inspiring either. I think she's done her job. Like. If if you have to say she definitely gets a pass, probably gets a B.、Uh, I wouldn't give an A to that acting. And I think for the younger generation of the actors in this drama, they are all at that level, which is they've satisfactorily completed their task. The only reason I think I'm watching this drama, really, the only part that I really want to watch or that will make me watch the rest of it, is actor Nie Yuan. Nie Yuan is one of my favorite actor in China, and he's one of the older generation of actors these days. Now you would consider、uh, in the late nineties, early twenties, he was really popular. He was in some really great dramas, such as Shang Cuo Hua Jiao Jia Dui Lang. It's such an old drama, but it's still one of my favorite dramas. Oh god, that drama is just gold. And back then, I was a huge, huge, huge fan. It was before the time of internet. There was no Weibo. There was no way to get extra information. You buy magazines, okay, for news from stars. During that period, I was a huge fan, partially because he actually looks like thirty, forty percent like my high school sweetheart. So I guess that's one of the reason. But he's a really good actor. He hasn't been around for a while in terms of producing works and kind of disappeared. So I was always waiting for him to show up somewhere. And finally, he shows up in Story of Yanxi Palace, and I love his acting. Because this drama is not the strongest script or best character script. That you can find, but his ability as an actor to make you sympathize with him makes it much better for you to deal with sometimes a little bit illogical plot lines and character setup. One of the recent episodes when the empress died, and there's one scene of him just crying one tear, and the tear didn't even fall. He kind of just wiped it away with his finger. But that was like one of the best one tier thing I've seen, and that will bring me to talk about the story, the plot, you know, like the the gist or the theme, whatever you want to call. I know the production is trying to place itself, position itself as this is a different court fighting drama, or it has a different female lead role, especially she is no longer Sha Bai Tian, which is stupid, pale, and sweet. She's no longer somebody who is, you know, like completely、uh, passive, waiting for other people to save her, and everybody's trying to hurt her because she's too good. She starts right from the first scene as like, "Don't mess with me, don't screw with me. If you screw with me, I'll screw it back." So this drama is trying to put forward that this is not a Mary Sue drama. This is not a typical big female lead role drama. Our female role is different from the other female roles, but is it? Is it? When you think about it, just just. Stop and think about it for a bit. You realize it's still a Mary Sue drama in the core. Because in this drama, as the character is set up as such a sort of slave-like girl with very low status, has no power, starting in the drama, and she right away starts to do things that are just crazy. She acts in the most insolent way. She does the most crazy things, say the most crazy things to the people she shouldn't be doing that to. And she gets away with it every time because the script says so, because the script writer says so, because she has so many people surrounding her for no good reason, helps her, supports her, forgives her mistakes, and save her from dying like a million times, while she's still acting like I do it myself. 
I'm the brave one. I'm the clever one. I'm the one you should not screw up with, and I will fight for my rights. That type of thing. This is so unrealistic that it's really hard for me to believe this type of character can exist. When you're writing a character situated in a particular historical period, you almost always put some sort of current people's thoughts, ideas. Onto that character, you project some twenty-first century ideas onto that character, and it's okay. But there needs to be a line that you can't cross, or you can only stretch reality that much before it becomes completely ridiculous. If she is the different character from everybody around her, maybe she has one friend who understands her and is thinking in the same way, but then everybody around her. Everyone else should still be the people who actually were living in that particular historical period, and who would have that times thinking in their head, not twenty first century people's mind. But in this drama, what you see is the empress. Oddly enough, has one of the most forward thinking thoughts in her head as a Qin Dynasty empress. You have the empress's brother. Just loves her for I don't know no particular reason because the scriptwriter says so. You have the emperor on one hand is always trying to reprimand her and doing something to to punish her, but actually is secretly just teasing with her and just having fun with it. It's like she can get away with all the wrong things and crazy things she does because everybody around her for some reason just let her off easily. I feel that's like super lazy writing. It is basically Golden Finger from the scriptwriter. It's the main characters, Halo, whatever, like whatever, like they can get away with it because they are the main character. So essentially, it is still Mary Sue character who everybody loves for no good particular reason. The thing that the emperor says to the emperor for the reason why、uh, she wants to protect this servant, this maid girl, is 她是我的希望 She is my hope. The camera didn't freeze. That's my silence. I have literally no words to, to reply to that line. What can I say? If you buy into that, then there's nothing I can say to you to actually convince you <laughs> onto my side, which is, huh? Logic, like just just think with logic. Chicken soup for the soul is not really a bad thing, but it depends on who is saying it, under what circumstances, to what people. You put that in Mandarin root Chinese inner court between the empress, who is the highest woman ranking in the entire country, to a slave, literally. And she said, "She is my hope." Like if she has two sons, they are her hope. That makes sense. That slave is my hope because 她活出了自己的样子 She's living like herself. Yeah, yeah, that's true. She is living like herself, but like. How is that your hope? I mean, that's a really weird logic stretch. They're trying to somehow make their main character to shine with this holy image, holy light. But it doesn't make sense. The only thing that actually saved that scene、um, between the empress and the emperor, when she basically begs him not to kill this girl, is their super. Period acting from Qin Lan and Nie Yuan, they're really good actors. They pull it off. But really, when you look at it on paper, like my brain just wouldn't understand what is the logic. Because I think, especially in the last year, I've watched so many Chinese dramas for doing this channel way, way too much. I think for a, a healthy person's dose of dramas,、uh, way too much for anyone really. Because I've seen better. Things right, the scripts, the storylines, the forward thinking, the different thinking people in ancient time, but written still realistically in their set time. I've seen that kind of scripts, that kind of characters. I've seen better work done, so it doesn't convince me that this story makes sense. So at the end of this review, I would say this is a drama. That is still really enjoyable. Probably doesn't deserve your hundred percent attention、uh, of every frame, every scene. Rewatch it over and over again. I would also term it in my term the IKEA installing dramas. Basically, is if you order like two huge furnitures and it's gonna take you five hours to put them up, you can put this drama on the side and while you're drilling holes, look at it occasionally. Um, I I would watch this drama in this way because I have outgrown this genre, this sort of chick fight harem story. There are only just that many things you can do to make the other woman miscarry. Um, the story gets old really, really quickly, and I'm no longer interested in that. So that's why I don't have a really strong reaction to Yan Xi. Um, I don't think it's bad, but I don't think it's worth 
my full attention. And also this drama uh, is not really English subtitled anywhere yet. So maybe you have to wait for a while if you really want to dig into it. It is on YouTube, um, but it is not subtitled. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.